Welcome back, friends. I don't know if you know this, but I don't get out much. Most of my videos take place right here at my home around the farm. I was born and raised here in this little farm community by parents who are the type of Michiganders who will boldly and proudly proclaim, whether it's true or not, that we live lives that we don't need vacations from, so we don't go. We don't know how, even if we wanted to. And if we need to, we just go north. So that's what we did. If we ever left the village, we'd go camping, fishing, hunting, making pilgrimages to every single Paul Bunyan shrine in the Michigan forest, swimming and collecting rocks in the Great Lakes or any of the other smaller ones in between. And that was enough. If you're a rural Michigander and a milkmaid like I am, you ain't going anywhere. At least not for long. The work is never done around here on this old family farm where I live and work. Every year, time goes by faster than the last, and I think I need to try to get out more, even if it's just for half a day. Too much time down in the pit of the milk and barn makes my tired mind wander. Walking too many circles in the same little fields and forests can make a farmer crazy. I mean, not myself here, but other farmers. I seen it. I gotta get out of here. I gotta look at some new trees once in a while to remind my old soul of that old quote that says between every two pines is a doorway to a new world. So today I'm gonna show you something different. For most folks it's not much, but for me, stepping one foot deeper into the Northwoods takes me back to the old less busy world I grew up in and reminds me that it is still here within reach. All right, cows. Mind your manners. Don't go nowhere. I'll be back tonight to milk you. If you're not from Michigan, you might think the line dividing our north and south is that 10 mile strip of water between the two peninsulas that we call the Straits of Mackinac, where the Great Lakes of Michigan and Huron meet. But if you're in Michigan and you get real, real high <laughs> till you're up in the clouds and then look down, you'll see a line that cuts across the palm of the lower peninsula and everything above that line goes dark. As the lights of the southern cities start to fade away, things get real quiet. Now, I don't live quite as north as I'd like to be. I walk that line somewhere right in there where the farmlands turn to the northwoods. Today, I'm not going far, 
just one or two steps out of the farmlands and I'm taking you with me to the village of Roscommon. It was first settled in 1845 by George Robinson of Detroit. It was named after the Michigan County in which it sits, which was named after County Roscommon in Ireland. It was a logging community. Most of the forests were cleared, but they've since grown back. Today, 981 people live there. Not much for jobs. Not much to do there, aside from the things I mentioned earlier. That's what makes it such a good destination for Michiganders like me who need a vacation. Today was my dad's idea, by the way. He says today is the day that a Baptist church in Roscommon has their annual wild game dinner. And I can't think of much else that would get my dad inside a Baptist church. Anyways, it's a fundraiser for their summertime archery youth camp. I'll show you the epic menu when we get there soon. There's something else I wanted to peek at nearby. I've never met a lake I didn't love, but this lake is well known to Michiganders and they might not even want me telling the outside world about it, so shh. Q100 Michigan Music Connection every Thursday night at 9 to join me, Big Jess, bringing you a world of Michigan music. Let me know about great local bands that should be on the radio or live events. Just open Q100 Michigan Music Connection under the Features tab at Q100Michigan.com to submit info or email me, Big Jess, at Q100Michigan.com. Years ago, National Geographic named it the sixth most beautiful lake in the whole world. Of course, the five Great Lakes, which Michigan owns, by the way, even Lake Ontario. Just kidding, calm down. Anyway, they were named the top five, but the rest of the world got jealous and mad, so National Geographic put some others in the top five to avoid hysterics. Unfortunately, I gotta be home in time to milk cows, so I won't have time to film it all, like these amazing professional pictures from Google. We're gonna look at one of my dad's fishing spots in a brook that comes out of the lake and he might actually kick my ass for showing it to y'all. So do me a favor, don't tell him what YouTube is, please. All right, just a few more pics of Higgins Lake from Google and then we're gonna get to my vacation destination. You guys, remember, I'm a farmer, not a filmographer. I ain't no tour guide. This ain't no travel channel. I just make videos to entertain myself. I'm not a professional anything. So this is where I remind you again, I'm filming kind of fast and inconspicuous. People around here ain't used to being filmed. They see me narrating everything I see and hooting and hollering all over the church and lake. They're gonna ask me what the hell I'm doing. And then I'm going to have to explain what a vlog is. And they're going to say, don't be putting all our sugar out there, promoting this area, bringing in people to our paradise. No people, no problems. And you know they probably ain't wrong.
Baptist Church. One option I see is Roscommon Baptist Church on South Main Street in Roscommon, less than a mile to your east. Is that the one you're looking for? Yes. Getting directions to Roscommon. I'm with my dad, brother, and nephew today. Dad wanted to get here an hour early because he was afraid it might get sold out. Oh, and then after the dinner, there's a hunter as a biblical-based guest speaker for an hour, but I'm only going to show a couple minutes of that before we go peek at Higgins Lake. Well, we were running out of room to the drive down. Found it eventually, I guess. You gotta go pee? No, what do you think? Let's go see what's going on. This meat has not been subject to state or federal inspection. That's fine with us. We each donated 10 bucks. I went to the kitchen, asked if there was anything I could do to help, but they said no, so I'm just going to wait right here with the guys. And if your eyes are bad here, I'll read you the menu. So they got three different kinds of tacos. Moose, wild turkey, and deer. Barbecued, wild boar. Black bear, bacon bomb. Elk spaghetti. Bison buffalo stew. Wild turkey. Antelope lasagna. Salad, potatoes, green beans, butter, corn. Coffee, pop. We don't say soda here. Water, pies, desserts galore. Oh, hang on one second. Try everything. All good. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the food that you provided through the, the game and uh, for the wonderful times that we had in the field. We ask a blessing upon the food, the fellowship, and uh, the message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't ask me how I got ranch dressing in my buffalo stew. I was excited. It was an accident. And I put all three taco meats in my taco, each bite a different animal. The men from this church provided all this meat themselves, both locally and from out-of-state hunts. Oh, and then their women cooked it from their secret recipes I never did get and served it in crock pots. Oh, this is bacon wrapped bear meatloaf, and I think they put brown sugar in it, or the bear was eating wild blueberries. I don't know. Bear meat is usually sweet anyway, but I'll tell you what, that buffalo just melts in your mouth. I might go back for seconds of that. Guys, we spent each evening of that hunt uh, centered around the Word of God and spending time studying God's Word, uh, challenging each other. In the majority of my life lived in uh, Covington, Indiana until I was nine years old. And in Covington, Indiana, the town that I lived in, there were 1,200 people. 700 of the people that moved into that town were from North Carolina that came to work a plant up there. And so I didn't realize this until we moved to Michigan, but I had a, a deep southern accent, right? So it took me years to be accepted as a Michigan guy. 
And then the other day, I was in the UP preaching a wild game dinner and found out that I'm still not considered like a Michigan guy. I'm a troll because I'm from below the bridge. <laughs> it's like, what is it going to take for these people to accept me in this state? Um, but being a Michigan guy, a lot of times you have these, uh, these bucks that you go out to hunt. What shall I do with this large mass in my mouth? <laughs> when upon the hill comes the biggest buck I've ever seen. And so I'm like sliding the sandwich back in my backpack, taking the gun off the rack, bringing it down, settle it, kind of. 27 yards, broadside. Easy bow shot. Not so easy with a shotgun. Like I'm driving through the scope, all the things that I thought might be easy, and it wasn't so easy. And like any good Michigan man, I had five shells, I used all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that sucker was not getting out of the field. I can remember the very first wild game dinner that I ever did. The guy's like, you want to bring some knots? I'll bring some knots. I want to give a sense of pitch. We'll do a, a slideshow. And I was like, ooh, I got to earn my credentials, like right off the get-go with these guys, so they'll listen to me. So I got my mounts all up here on the platform. I got my pictures up there. And I got up there, and I realized all of a sudden, It's our nature to boast. Imagine if we could somehow earn our eternal security. Like, I can earn my way to heaven. I'd be walking around strutting my stuff like nobody's <laughs> business. And yet, it would deflect from the reality that a loving God sovereignly sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross to pay the penalty for my sins. And instead of all of the attention going to Him, I would want some for myself. No. No. Did you see last night the Northern Lights? You know what's running through my mind? The heavens declare the glory of God. Psalms David writing, and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. God, you are so good. As the sun rises, whether it be on a trout stream, unbeknownst to where it's at in the middle of Michigan, or whether it be on the, the roost sitting under there waiting for the turkeys to fly down in the morning, as that sun's rising, the birds are gobbling, the other birds are chirping, every bit of that declares that my God creator is literally smiling down saying, I made that for you. Stop ignoring me. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 says that the invisible attributes of God are clearly seen in creation so that you're without excuse. I got a picture for him, I got You want it? I got some of those uh, salmon balls that are beads. This would be just a place, and that's what they used to do. A little dam right there? Yeah. You want to uh, get the poles off?
see that aqua blue water out there? He went all the way to there. And when he cast, it looked like he was casting into the darker water. Sure. Drop my phone out of my pocket. Now I look back and see what it was.
cavalry. They were like second of seventh, first of the fifth, first of the seventh. What's that in your hat? Huh? What's that in your hat? Affiliated woodpecker feather I found <laughs> at the dinner. At outside, the dinner? Outside. Outside? Huh. Yesterday I went across the street to my house 